My name is Hortense Proust. I'm a French graphic designer. I've been studying and practicing design for the past six years. Prior to joining this program, I challenged the notion of collective imagination by questioning the role of image search engines. I took this previous research and extended to the context of museums and art exhibitions. Hi, my name is Hortense Proust. Today I'm going to talk about the impacts of digitization on the field of art exhibitions. So my research started with these, Google Images result pages. I find them fascinating. Google Images algorithm is a keyword referencing system based on the file names, linked text, and adjacent text of the images. It is a formula written by web developers to sort out through the content uh, through filters that evaluate its relevance in terms of freshness, location, and page rank. These grids of images give us a glimpse of the internet-based culture we now live in. It's visual, it's quantified, and it's connected. It has changed the circumstances for viewing visual content and, by extension, art. So nowadays, viewing art might look like this. It might look like this, like this, or even like this, with digital platforms such as websites becoming the medium for art. In this context, some might ask, why do we still need museums? It might seem, it might seem like, thanks to the internet, anyone can access and look at artworks anywhere, anytime, and for free. Yet, museums remain places of extreme importance, cultural importance, because they are spaces for storytelling. They provide a physical and spatial experience of art that the space of the internet lacks. That said, to remain relevant, art museums need to embrace digitization. Whatever their collection's character, they need to be in talk news, which today implies that they be places of digital and social interaction. Most importantly, they need to consider how this digital phenomenon is changing exhibition making as a field. This subject is, a, is at the center of attention in museums today, yet it is still a very broad territory. It is hard to grasp and to deal with. We are, we are at a turning point in the history of art exhibition, and there is an, urge, an urgency for museums to accommodate and adapt. The curatorial practice has started to morph from an academic and intellectual practice into a more social and human process focused on the visitor's experience in the museum. My thesis research has led me to look into exactly how museums and curators, as the institutional actors in the discourse, are dealing with digitization as the element transforming exhibition making into a social process and which ends up changing the roles of the curators and making the visitors, the audience, the central actor. By means of connectedness and through the subject matters they deal with, artists make themselves and their art more and more accessible to, the, to their public, both physically and intellectually. As a result, they bring art outside of the classic physical art gallery setting and of the, the academic artistic practice, which challenges the role and purpose of the museum. As mentioned, some institutions are already digitizing themselves. For instance, the Cooper Hewitt's curatorial department works hand in hand with the digital and emerging media team led by Michael Walter. Their digital pens and interactive tables were created to redefine the visitor's experience within the museum gallery and to make it last longer as they have a personal profile on which the information they collected during the exhibition is saved. They can get back to it afterwards and reflect on it. On a simpler note, more and more cultural institutions are digitizing their collections and making them available online as well as getting social media profiles to advertise their programs. But exhibition-wise, what I understood is that the focus has shifted from display to experience. Exhibitions are end products that museums need to attract more people and really connect with their public. 
By using design features from the digital realm in exhibitions, curators aim to strengthen the bond between the museum and the audience. As a result, the exhibition's purpose isn't only to show artifacts anymore, but to stand as this object that only in the museum setting becomes a testimony of this cultural and social interaction. Following Marshall McLuhan's thought in The Medium is the Message, we can now consider exhibitions as a new medium, not only cultural but social, in which the audience's role is participative and performative. As I interviewed curators from different institutions during my research, their common, view, their common view was that although the exhibition remains the goal of their practice, making it memorable and personal to the audience is their means. Digitization has trans transformed audiences from passive spec spectators into active members in the exhibition making process. They are now the key actors in this discourse. Exhibitions are made for them and their voices matter. These art selfies might not be of great aesthetic importance, yet portra they portray a social habit and trend that's emerged in the past decade. What they also do is provide museums with reproductions of the artworks to be displayed elsewhere, an archive of past exhibition, and a new form of criticism, which is a lot of information for museums to take in and potentially use. By questioning the role of these people and their selfies, I was able to, to determine that they have become the core of this discourse for three main reasons. Because they have emphasized a newer, more curated form of criticism. Because they interact more directly with the content of exhibitions, both intellectually and physically, and therefore create connections with fellow visitors by circulating this content and because their needs and wishes have become the main focus of this practice. Social media, for instance, provide museums with platforms through which to have direct feedback from the public. On Instagram, criticism isn't only written anymore, um, but paired with photographs and videos. On Twitter, the number of characters is limited to 140 characters. On Facebook, a simple like can make a statement. And on Instagram, again, the caption and comment section works as a label on a wall in an art gallery. The sharing that happens on social media through these selfies and other pictures accelerates to some extent the circulation of artworks within the international museum scene, which ultimately is what makes them gain value in the art world. The role of the, di of the design of these digital fast sharing platforms and devices is to make this experience visually pleasant and easy the grid, for instance, serves this purpose. What it allows, though, is for meta-narratives to be created around exhibitions and artworks. The notion of interaction with art is now challenged by projects such as the Google Cultural Institute. Meant to give more people an easier access to art, the Google Cultural Institute is an alternative online museum experience. Google's initial, initial idea for this was to develop and create a platform that would be the answer to one question. How can we translate the world's most significant moments from history, art, and culture into a living archive of online experiences? That's a big question to answer. So the result is this website launched in 2011 that allows users to both take cyber tours of partner museums and to access ultra high resolution photographs of their collections. The role of the Google Cultural Institute is to become a substitute museum. What I find it success successful at is offering the viewers this ultra high resolution experience of the artworks. Then to, thanks to the technological photo photographic features, the viewer is able to <laughs> zoom very far in the images and see things they might not otherwise be able to. In this case, the digital feature adds something to the experience, allowing us to wonder about the use of such tool within the museum setting. What it fails at, in my opinion, though, is providing the visitor with in-situ experience, which, is the t which the cyber tours are supposed to do. Here, they use Google Street View's 360-degree panora panoramic technology by separating the art from the space and giving it this game-like, humanless feature. The Google Cultural Institute breaks the bond. 
The audience is the reason for exhibitions to happen today. My speculation is that the future of curation lies in the relationship between curatorial teams and museum audiences. It lies in the ability of curators to transition from their academic practice to a more uh, speculative one, meant to anticipate their public's needs, and in which features directly borrowed from this digital culture, such as the grid, are the tools they use to connect the dots and build bridges. Thank you.